Hey, what's up, Cub fans? Welcome to another episode of Talking Cubs, brought to you by CubsInsider.com. I'm Ryan Davis, and I'll be joined in a moment by Sean Sears. We're talking about the Cubs' first three games against the Texas Rangers. Unfortunately, they were one and two. We've already done two videos on the series, kind of negatively talking about the disappointing aspects of the pitching, but uh, we at least have one for you optimists the offense let's talk about how great the cubs offense was in the first series sean they scored 28 runs in three games yeah who would have thought right uh just kidding i think most people thought this offense was good but from the way people were talking about it coming in here there's a lot of question marks surrounding it so i think there's one big takeaway from this weekend despite the two you know brutal losses here with the bullpen kind of collapsing a little bit is that the offense really made all these games i mean the cubs were in every single one of these games for the most part and being able to score 28 runs you Tell anyone you're going to score 30 runs in a series, you're, you're thinking of probably winning that series. So uh, huge up here. There was a couple guys I really liked. Wilson Contreras, obviously he had a huge game Saturday night. Um, I think the big takeaway I had for him is it feels like when Contreras is really driving that ball, he's hitting it to like right center field gap a little bit. That seems like his natural yeah. trajectory. And when he's doing that, he obviously he had a, I think he had a triple at some point. He also hit a double, or I think maybe an RBI single, something like that. And it kind of just, even uh, I think it was Ron Coomer on the radio even pointed out that Contreras has had kind of his natural trajectory. And that's a huge upside if Contreras is going to be closer to the guy we saw in 2017 to the end of 2018. Um, that's huge. That's a huge piece, but I'm, really excited about uh, Bryant, Rizzo, and and Baez in the two through four holes. I, I think we saw a lot of production out of that this weekend. Yeah, Bryant, uh, I have right here, four, four for 13 with a home run. Baez was six for 14 with two home runs and six RBI. Um, Rizzo also hit a home run, a monster blast all the way to yeah. the upper deck on Sunday. That was, that was huge. Got them from 10 to 8 to 10 to 9 before they finally tied the game. And then uh, Kyle Schwarber hit, hit two home runs, had a good series. So uh, the offense overall, top to bottom, it, you really couldn't look at any one guy and say, man, he struggled badly, except for possibly Ben Zobrist. But, but even him, you know, the numbers aren't terrible. If, it, if there's one yeah. if, if there's one thing I would say uh, to maybe not be totally fooled by the offensive numbers, it's that I can't remember a series in recent history where I saw so many ground balls kind of up the middle that snuck past That's all the fielders. Point. Yeah. I, I'm gonna, I just have to guess that Texas has, new sod that's like real short and fine and dense that's basically like astro turf because that's what it looked like right uh, the, like pretty much every ground ball that was hit like jason hayward had a bunch of singles in this series <laughs> and he pointed it's exactly what i was gonna say <laughs> yeah frankly i i didn't feel like he was driving the ball with authority i thought he just chopped it into the ground and you know come to find that you know a lot of those balls are moving at a, at a high exit velocity um okay so but but still like you know he's grounding balls up the middle and they're just like flying through same for albert almora hit a few like that daniel descalso hit a few like that so uh, there are some reasons to be a little bit pessimistic or not I, I i guess uh you know maybe not pessimistic but a little cautious about how you feel about the offense given you know just how many of those big hits were ground balls that snuck past a, an infielder that's a great point. There was one in particular that Hayward hit that kind of like it snuck by Rogdon Odor, and then he kind of just like waved it off because he thought it was going to keep rolling to to DeShields in center field. And all of a sudden it just kind of stopped in like the midway point point between him and DeShields. So DeShields like sprinted on the ball because Elmore and it was Elmore actually that hit it. He turned hard and 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 thought about maybe going a second for for a moment and then went back, obviously. But I was like, well, holy crap, that what happened with that ball? Because it looked like Odor, I, I assumed Odor was getting ready to turn and fire with the ball so the other thing too is odor himself had a couple balls where he just i don't know where he was throwing just like chucked it i mean there's that one play it's at, at shortstop he was trying to go back with hayward sliding into enduris there and he, he just threw the ball to a place where i mean he basically it looked like he was trying to tag jason hayward with the ball because enduris like reached for a second but then he had hayward on him so he's just like all right i'm not about to get chopped in half by six foot five 240 pound jason hayward so i it was there's a lot of things the Rangers did that a lot of the Cubs get back into this game. Good teams won't give you those opportunities. And that's kind of where we're seeing maybe not a mirage or, or a lack of offensive production because we saw the three big guys really do with their job in this series. It's just kind of what was added outside of those guys might be something you can't always expect. 
Yeah, and I don't want to go too negative because I promise positive. I, I promised right. myself I would be positive about this despite the one and two. But uh, yeah, if there is a complaint, there are a few at-bats uh, throughout the weekend that I thought um, the Cubs were hacking a little early. Uh, you know, Maybe a little bit better patience could have been uh, the right medicine in a certain moment. Uh, but there were a bunch of positives, especially the, the like you said, the two, three, four Bryant, Rizzo, and Baez is just a a nightmare for opposing pitchers, and it's a Cubs fan's dream. So uh, that's going to be exciting to watch. Schwarber hitting the ball the way he did, you know, if you add him to those three guys, and and you have uh, a four a court a, a quartet of guys mm-hmm. that are hitting the ball like that. I mean, that's just absolutely sick. So. Um, absolutely wonderful news for the Cubs is that these guys are all healthy and mashing the ball. The downside is that the pitching is absolutely terrible, or at least it was. (laughs) It was was bad. Obviously. Yeah, it was bad. We don't know if that's how it's going to obviously continue to be. We hope not, but uh, I don't have a ton of confidence in a lot of these guys and they kind of, you know, (laughs) made me feel not confident more. So good for, yeah, that's, that's that's the unfortunate part of the offense was so great, but they did they have already lost one game where they scored at least ten runs. Uh, so losing games when you get into double figures is bad, from what I understand. I, that's that's what they tell me. I was told that we would not have to do math on this show. So <laughs> sorry. Well, uh, at this point, uh, you guys who are watching, let us know what you think. Uh, what, what was the most exciting thing about the offense for you guys go down to the comments below let us know give us a thumbs up if you like this comment or if this this comment if you like these comments i guess uh if you like what we're doing give us a thumbs up uh click the subscribe button as well if you're not already doing that uh, and go check out our other videos we uh, we're new on the channel with cubs insider but we've done other stuff on our previous channel that we had started we have a lot of videos kind of built up there you can go to talking cubs and find those you can also like us on twitter follow us on twitter i guess uh, i'm just all over the place now but we're at uh, talking cubs show on twitter you can also find me at ryan q davis sean's at sean r sears so uh thanks again guys we will talk to you again next time <laughs>